Welcome to McAlpin Locks and Dam, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Locks and Dams. My name is Dewey Tacasi. I'm Assistant Operations of Locks and Dams in Louisville District. I'm going to give you a quick rundown here of the, the lock chambers. Uh, as we said before, they're 1200 by 110. At the end of each uh, side of this chamber here, you have a set of gates. Uh, those gates are 60 by 70 in dimensions and they weigh approximately 300 tons. The elevation change of these chambers here in McAlpine are 37 foot, which means when a boat comes in on the upper pool or lower pool at normal stages, that boat will transfer 37 feet of elevation. Approximately one foot of this chamber is a million gallons, so in that time for us to lock a, a craft up or down is going to be 37 million gallons of water transferred. What we provide the industry and the motor vessels that uh, carry barges up and down the river uh, is the, the elevation to upper and lower and pull. So when the boat gets into our call-in points, which can either be on upstream or downstream side, they call into our nine operators in the tower, uh, tell them the commodities, what they're carrying, what their, uh, what their length and width are so we know that they can fit uh, correctly into the chambers. Uh, we will prep the chamber either on upper or lower pool, depending on what the transfer is. Uh, the vessels make their way into the, the chambers. They tie off to the floating mooring bits. Um, the lock operators uh, shut the gates, open the valves, and either transfer the water to the upper or lower pool and the vessel behind that. Uh, the usual locking procedure, depending on our water elevations, is going to take anywhere from uh, 40, 45 minutes to get from either pool level. Okay, so a unique question that probably comes up quite often when you look out on these barges as they're uh, going up and downstream is you probably wonder how much, how much does a barge hold? So your barge is going to be equivalent. Uh, we're going to take that into uh, put it on rail and we're also going to put it on the road. So if you wanted to take one full tow and put that into semis, you're looking at approximately uh, 1,050 trucks if you're going to put that on a barge or trucks. If you're wanting to put that tonnage on a train, that train is going to be almost three miles long for one tow on the river. And this lock does approximately 15, 15 to 16 uh, lockages a day. So that's 15 times a thousand trucks or 15 times three miles of rail. So uh, what we provide the nation is getting that, getting all that cargo and those raw commodities, getting them on the river, off the road, so the uh, so we can handle that on our roadways. Welcome to Calpine Locks and Dams. My name is Patrick Casto, the lock master at the facility here. We're on the Ohio River, <clears throat> um, the largest lift dam on the Ohio River, the first uh, dam on the Ohio River. And I'm gonna go through the, our facility with you and uh, explain what we do in, in our facility itself. Right here at the Red Arrow, this is our visitor center of McAlpine Lock. We have two 100 foot by 110 foot chambers that lock boats from the upper pool to the lower pool and from the lower pool to the upper pool. The responsibility area that, that we have, our jurisdiction, is followed by this red line. It starts at the l &I Railroad Bridge and then ends at the K&I Railroad Bridge downstream. Uh, th this includes all the navigable traffic, shipping port island, and, and even the, the fishing areas in the fossil bed just downstream of the upstream dam. We have uh, two remote dam sites, one on uh, a lower dam site containing four tanner gates and one upper dam site containing five tanner gates. We also have the LG&E hydroelectric power plant on site. Uh, we're connected to shipping port island and this is the canal that boats will take to approach the lock. So this is the, this area that represented with this outline is the Falls of the Ohio. It uh, drops 26 feet in just under two miles. The, uh, you can see the fossil bed here from the dam site exposed that uh, people do use for, for fishing and, and tours and uh, to see some of the history and the archeological uh, issues with the fossil bed. Um, the, North Chamber, Chamber 2, opened in 1961. Uh, the newer chamber, uh, Chamber 1, was opened in 2009. It's a, uh, new, it's a new lock, it is PLC controlled, so it was a, a large upgrade from the original uh, direct control hydraulic gates. Um, believe it or not, there are no, there's no pumping of water in, and out, in or out of the lock. 
Uh, the lock itself works through gravity. We have uh, two culvert valves on each chamber and we open the valve when the gates are closed and the pool is on the low pool and gravity equalizes the water to raise the chamber. We close the filling valves on that culvert and then we open the emptying valves on the other culvert, allowing the water to flow out and equalize down to the lower pool. So there's, there's no actual pumping of water contrary to what a lot of people tend to believe. So initially, especially during low water periods, um, boats would have to unload their cargo prior to the locks being built, um, transport their cargo across land and, and get down the falls uh, uh, by themselves or in extreme dry times, they would have to unload the cargo and then transport it down the bank to a, another vessel that was further down river. So the, the falls of the Ohio uh, created a big challenge for, for navigation, especially with, with industry. Uh, once the lock was built, that allowed boats to make the pass through the falls of the Ohio without having to unload cargo. And that made a huge economic boost to the river industry. This is our HMI interface, which stands for uh, Human Machine Interface. Um, it allows the lead lock operators to control the chamber, everything from the gates, the culvert valves, uh, bubbler systems to clear drift. And this is how they control chamber one from the entire chamber from one position. Here we have our LOMA screen, which is the lock operator management application. This is how we monitor traffic and uh, see what, what boats are in the area, what traffic we have coming towards the lock in each direction. On this screen, we have LPMS, uh, <clears throat> which is our system for logging all the data of all of the vessel traffic coming through the lock, whether it be uh, pleasure craft, government craft, or uh, vessel traffic for industry. And then this is one of our operational camera screens that allows us to see various locations around a lock so we can ensure as boats transit the lock that they do so safely and uh, protects the, the, the boats and the uh, facility from any kind of damage. Although we're currently closed here at the visitor center due to the pandemic, our normal operating hours during the summer are from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. and during the winter, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. This area behind me acts as our overlook and is a self-guided tour with graphics on the pedestals and recordings at each pedestal to give you the history of the uh, Falls of the Ohio and the McAlpine locks and dams. We also have an area <clears throat> over here for picnics and uh, an old tow boat to, so you can see the difference between the size of boats that, that traveled the river once compared to the size of boats that travel the river today. We also have a main screw from one of the uh, tow boats that, to give you a size of the idea of the, the power that these boats are using to push all this cargo.